All right, you're gonna have to bear with me because I've already recorded like six computer videos this week and honestly, I'm just f***ing sick and tired of computers right now. Here we have the Dell Inspiron 14 2-in-1. Now, it's worth mentioning that I just reviewed the Dell Inspiron 14. So if you're looking for more in-depth specs and benchmarks and that kind of thing, I recommend that you watch that video as the two are very similar in terms of their platform. However, much like all 2-in-1 computers, this one just simply isn't quite as good from a usability and practicality standpoint. See, the thing is, is this is a very good computer. In fact, I like it a lot. Is it as good as the 14? Absolutely not. That was like a Dr. Seuss rhyme. I, that made my day. By the way, this is a no BS, non-sponsored, non-paid for channel. Everything that we review, we buy ourselves. So if you're looking to buy a computer or other products and want to figure out if you should buy it yourself, please hit that like and subscribe button as we release stuff weekly. For example, when you compare this to the Dell Inspiron 14, the screen on the 14 is superior. This screen is shiny. So that means when you're working either under direct light, outside by a window, at a coffee shop, cafe, this kind of thing, it's, it, you're gonna get a lot of glare on the screen. And unfortunately, it's just not quite bright enough to get beyond that glare. And the reason for that is because it has a touch digitizer or digitizer on it. And with that touch digitizer automatically makes it a little bit less bright. And the primary reason for that is because Dell wants to keep this laptop like under the $600 range, which of course you can find it for that, which is a good deal. But be that as it may, because they're going a little bit cheap, they're putting a little bit of a cheaper display in there. You're not gonna have as good a color. You're not gonna have as good a brightness. And overall, it's going to be a less good viewing experience on the display, all because you wanted to have touch on it. And the same goes with the keyboard. Now, I don't really know how having this as a two-in-one actually affects this. Obviously, Dell just chose to put an old-style keyboard in this versus what's in the new Dell Inspiron 14s. But the bottom line is that this is just simply not quite as tactile or responsive as it is on the Inspiron 14. It's still a good keyboard. It's like probably like a four out of five, but it's not like excellent like the other one was. And the same goes with the trackpad. It's just not quite precise. It ghosts a little bit too much. It's a decent size and it does have multi-gesture support. And overall, it is decent, but it's just not quite as good as it is on the Dell Inspiron 14. Same goes with the speakers. Same goes with the camera on top. It does have Wi-Fi built in and Bluetooth and all that other good stuff, and it is Wi-Fi 6, and it does have a Windows Hello compatible touch fingerprint reader there, uh, and it does have a little privacy shutter on the top there as well, but ultimately when you compare this thing to the Dell Inspiron 14, it's just a little less good in about every single way. About the only redeeming quality that this has is potentially its I.O. Let's go ahead and talk about that for a moment. On this side, you got full-size HDMI, which is nice. You've got two USB-C 3.2 ports, uh, that is gonna allow for both powering, which it does include a USB-C charger, which I love, and also going to allow for putting a display on there as well. On this side, you've got a little USB type A 3.2 port, and then a full size, full size camera card reader. Uh, oh, you also have an audio jack that will support audio and microphones on it. So they didn't crowd, crowd it with anything like Kensington lock, although everybody uses Kensington lock. And then you credit with anything that you don't need, but ultimately I would have liked to see something like Thunderbolt 4 on here. And in another way that it's not quite as good as the Dell Inspiron 14 is the battery life isn't quite as good. And that's because they have to put in a different display. It's gonna take up a little bit more energy. And there's just a little bit few things that it's gotta do, compute more stuff that it's just not gonna have quite as good a battery life. I would say ultimately the best you're gonna get on here is about seven to eight hours, practically speaking. As soon as you try to max out the monitor and you will need to if you're working in a college classroom, that battery is going to die really quick. And then last but not least, let's talk about the mobility factor on it. The, you know, screen bends like this and everything and that's all nice and fine and dandy. And the hinges are metal, which is awesome. It means they won't break like a shitty Hewlett Packard will. But bottom line is that this computer is just a little bit heavier. It's just a little clunkier, a little bit thicker, and for what? Because you needed to have the touch capabilities? I don't know why you need to have these laptops turn into a tablet. I still have yet to have a single person on this, and I've been doing this for years, give me one good reason why having a two-in-one laptop is advantageous to having a laptop and a tablet separately. Bottom line is if you want to be able to use a computer to draw on, you should be getting a tablet separate because it's going to have better responsiveness. So basically as you are writing on the screen, it's going to act more like a real pen. And this just simply isn't going to do that. You can go ahead and buy one of Dell's, you know, fancy active pen styluses for, you know, an overpriced amount of money. But the bottom line is it's not going to be a true writing experience. And even for things like drawing and stuff like that, again, just not quite as good as that of like an iPad or a Wacom tablet. You get the idea. So do I recommend the Dell Inspiron 14 2-in-1? Well, actually, yes. And the reason why is because even though it's not quite as good as the Dell Inspiron 14, it is a little bit cheaper. So if you are a college student or somebody on a budget 
and you're looking for the awesome 14 inch form factor, but you don't want to break the bank, then you can find these computers for sub $500, which is an absolute steal for what you get. So would I ever have one of these computers for myself? No, probably not. But would I recommend them for somebody that just needs a good all around machine to kind of beat around with, travel with, do productivity work with, that kind of thing? Absolutely. Anyway, hope this video was helpful in some capacity. If you have any questions on the Inspiron 14 2-in-1, feel free to reach out to us in the comments section. Please like and subscribe, and we'll be back with another video really soon.